Well, hello there. I hope you're doing well. And in this video today, I want to share with you my sort of general overview of how to increase the DPS on your Barbarian. Now, I want to start with a mistake I see people make a lot of the time when they're leveling. And that is, it's in general, following an endgame build while you're leveling. That's never a good idea. But it's getting too bogged down with the type of weapon you're attacking with. And what I mean is like with most, atta with most attacks in the game, you can choose what weapon that you attack with. Now, Rend is kind of a bad example because it can only use use slashing type weapons but even so I can switch between those or I can leave it on auto select and this will use the most powerful item power slash weapon DPS weapon that I have which is what I would recommend that you do just completely ignore the weapon type uh, at least until you get to a point where you have like one of each weapon type of equivalent power when you're like world tier 4 way 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 up there in levels worry about that then until now highest item power highest weapon DPS, the two are connected. That's going to give you the most significant bump up in your DPS. Along with that though, there is some other stuff you need to keep an eye on because if you are using an ability like Whirlwind, for example, which can use dual wield, slashing and bludgeoning, there are some things like downstream that you need to potentially change in order to make sure you're not leaving any power on the table. Now, using Whirlwind as an example still, because it's a very good talent for you know demonstrating this. If you are using Furious Whirlwind, and you're not using a slashing weapon, then you're losing a lot of DPS here because it says in the tooltip here, while using a slashing weapon, it inflicts a bleed. So it has to be an ax, a polearm or a sword. It's not like the game's gonna stop you from spinning around. It's just, you won't get any value from this if you're using a mace. And it's the same for a lot of passives as well. Endless Fury, for example, only generates additional fury if you are using a two-handed weapon. Heavy-handed, again, two-handed weapon, wallop, only bludgeoning weapons so you need to be aware of anything that may be getting affected by your weapon choice in your skill tree and later on in the game there is a lot of glyphs and talents here which are weapon dependent as well but I know it might seem a little bit overwhelming, especially if you're a new player. But anytime you swap from like slashing to bludgeoning, just make sure there's nothing in your skill tree that needs changing. This is honest to God. This is the difference between somebody who, who's like good at Barbarian and can like level really nice, really smooth and, and is feeling very powerful all of the time. And the person who's just pissed off on Reddit, wanted to blow their brains out because they can't understand why they can't do the first capstone dungeon. It's because they're not paying attention to the weapon that they're using or any of the downstream effects that swapping the weapon has on their, their damage output. So try and do that. Um, moving forward then, the next thing you want to do is take a look at your stats. Now, I won't go too much into detail, but I'll explain the sort of core stats that you're going to want to keep an eye out for as a Barbarian. And the first one is Crit Chance. Always my nose is itching like crazy, but Crit Chance is something that you can get on your gloves and on your rings and crit damage, of course, weapons and rings is going to go really nicely with crit chance it's a huge huge amount of damage for us and well actually for all classes and you want to prioritize it practically over everything else you can see here i'm still using level 36 gloves as a level 65 just because the crit chance on here is so high obviously the other two stats are very good but i will not sacrifice crit chance for practically anything same with this weapon this weapon's actually a regular legendary from like level 40 because it has such good crit damage on it Try and prioritize this as much as you can and you'll see your damage go extremely high. Now, another thing that you can do is actually also introduce vulnerability into your kit. Now, this is a little bit more difficult than crit damage because there's a, a few more mechanics you have to use in order to get this up and running. But it's a very, very valuable tool. And I'll just explain some of the early game versions as well as late game versions of Funerable that you have access to. So you have Enhanced Flay, which is applying Funerable when you use Flay. It's a small percent chance. Pressure Point is an extremely low chance to apply it with a core skill. I actually don't use this very often. My preferred method is Enhanced Steel Grasp, which not only grabs enemies into me, but also applies Funerable. I know a lot of people are actually using Kick these days. This is more of a single target method of doing it. And in your Paragon board, one of the most popular methods, I believe, is going to be Exploit here, which will apply Funerability the first time you do damage to an enemy for three seconds. So there's a lot of these that you can use to activate Funerability and get access to vulnerable damage now why crit damage and vulnerable damage well there's a lot of math that goes behind this i'd highly highly recommend checking out a video from like one of the many many other content creators that have gone through and broken down the damage buckets for diablo 4 so search you know diablo 4 damage buckets to understand this but if you're happy to take my word for it 
The gist is that crit and vulnerable damage are multiplicative damage sources where nearly everything else in the game is additive. And for this reason, they are multitudes more powerful than like core damage, close damage, anything like that. And even if like the numerical value is the same, like for, on this weapon, for example, they're not that far away from one another, but the crit and vulnerable are multiple times more effective at increasing your DPS than core skill damages. So you want these. These are very, 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 very valuable. So make sure you're getting those. Um, just a quick throwback to a simple tip. If you're not level five in your core skill, try and do that. Make sure you get plus ranks to your core skill in your gloves as well. This will be a pretty significant damage. Like it's like 10% per rank, so pretty big. Uh, you wanna try and go for that as much as possible. After that, you wanna make sure you're using complementary aspects for your build. Now, this one's kind of complicated because I don't recommend following end game builds. And most builds are just end game builds and don't offer like alternatives for early game aspects. Now I do do that with most of my builds, but if you're following one and you don't have that, you will kind of just have to use your own sort of um, decision making uh, on whether or not you're going to use one or not. But most of it's usually pretty obvious. You can look at something and go, okay, well, this will increase my damage a little bit. I have a spare piece of gear that's not got an aspect on there. Just smack it on there, right? You're going to be a lot better off even if you're using like loads of random stuff. They're not using anything at all. And another thing you want to do is pay very close attention to which aspects you're going to put onto your two-handed weapons and on your amulet. Reason being, they're much more effective when they're on these slots. An aspect that is applied to a two-handed piece of gear has its effect doubled and an effect on a amulet is increased by 50%. So you can get a significant boost to your DPS if you use the right aspect on the right piece of gear. So pay attention to that. Um, again, if you're making the build yourself, just like if it's the core part of your build, make sure that's on the two-hander. But usually if you're following a guide, that should tell you. Next is Fury, uh, like Fury Efficiency. Now this is a huge, huge kind of topic to break down into a short video, but I actually have a whole dedicated video. I'll leave linked in the description for this one, uh, along with all of my specific breakdowns to a lot of these tips in the description below. But you want to work on increasing how fast you generate fury where you can, as well as decreasing the amount that you spend. Some examples are like having fury cost reduction on your boots and or your amulet. And if you have like an ability like Ground Stomp, which gives you a significant boost in gener uh, generation of Fury, uh, but it has like a long cooldown, then cooldown reduction is a fantastic tool that you can get on your amulet and your boots. There are plenty of things that you can get from your skill tree, your Paragon board to help out with this. But typically, if you see something that benefits your Fury generation or your Fury cost reduction in some way, shape or form, it's really, really good for your DPS. And then after that, I think the last tip I want to leave you with is make sure your rotation is correct. And this is going to sound like a bit of a meme because like most people play like whirlwind and you just go shout, 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 spin, right? But even that has a priority order. You actually want to be using rally and cry before you use any of the other shouts because rally and cry increases your fury generation and your other shouts are being used to increase your fury, right? So you want that to be cast first. So it does technically, I mean, yeah, you just, you know, go chop, 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 spin around, sure. But there is, there is actually a rotation there. And take my current build, for example, there is a rotation here as well. So I use steel grabs, grabs the enemies in, makes them vulnerable. I then use rupture, which applies a massive AOE bleed to everything in front of me. And then I use ground stomp. But why do I do it this way? Well, it's because I'm using Skullbreaker. And Skullbreaker will, will basically execute enemies that have bleed on them by dealing 72% of the total bleed damage immediately, right? Rather than having to wait for it over time. So they have to be bleeding before I stun them. If I grasp and then stun and then bleed, I'm not getting any value whatsoever from this aspect. Now, there are about 100 different rotations for about 100 different builds. And there's always like small little niche changes that even like Whirlwind has within it. But um, at the end of the day, like, it's, it should be fairly obvious, like if you read your aspects, if you take 10 minutes just to go through them and understand like, okay, well, this one does damage if I stun them after they're bleeding and you can kind of work out the rotation pretty, you know, pretty easily from move uh, from there. And uh, if you're lucky enough, hopefully maybe if you're following a guide, the content creator has been kind enough to tell you what the rotation is, but just give your stuff a read, have a look at your skills, see if there's any sort of um, synergistic things between them that 
will give you some indication to the best way to, to put them through in a rotation. And you may see that your class will go from like not playing too well to playing extraordinarily well just by changing a couple of buttons around. You'd be surprised how many people, um, that, me included, find that they've been doing something, just a little silly mistake. They've been doing something in just slightly the wrong order and leaving like double damage on the table. It's insane. So take a look at that. And I think... That really is the last tip I want to leave you with. That's, that's everything put together. And, well, I mean, if you enjoyed the video, if you found it useful, don't forget to give it a like. Consider subscribing. And uh, maybe come check out the live stream sometime. We're live every day over on Twitch. Links to absolutely everything down in the description below. And, uh, yeah, hope it helped. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.